All right, so pretty much you've just set up the shading network for the knife. And the reason why I call it a shading network is because we actually made a network in the background inside of Maya. So if you were to come up to the top here and click on this sphere, which is called Hypershade Window, this pops up. So this is what we call the hypershade. And in here, you can see, if I open up this just a little bit more, you can see these are all the shaders we have inside our scene. Here's all the nodes that we can create from. And then this is the graph. And then this is the property manager with a little material viewer up here. So I can come in here and click on different shaders, and I'll show it right here. You can come in here and click on the green. And these are all those ID maps that we made earlier. But I'm going to select this uh, particular material here. And I'm just going to hover over it, right click, hold, and it's going to say, gives us a little marking menu. And I want to scroll down to where it says graph network. So I'm just little, uh, left mouse, right mouse clicking down and saying graph network. And here is that network I was telling you about. So actually, you can see if I come in, I can grab that bottom corner, bring it out. I can press the uh, Alt key and right mouse click and zoom in. And then holding the Alt key again, middle mouse click and hold and drag to reposition it. And you can see we've gone in here and here is the texture node. It also made a place 2d node so this is a, a coordinate system basically your uvs that are assigned to your texture and then plugged into the correct attributes in the actual shader so this is the shader so you can see all the different uv or 2d placement nodes and then attached to the actual bump nodes or the actual um, file nodes right here now, the one map I forgot to continue putting in was the normal map. So let's finish that up. So right here, we got the file four, which might be something called different for you. That's fine. And we want to input that map. So we go to file name, input it, and then we're going to pick that normal map. And then we're going to load it. And you can see that this menu also has the same parameters associated with it, which is really nice. So you can see over here, we've got our color space. Here, we want to make sure we set it to raw. So we're using that raw color space to display the normal map or display it. The other thing we want to make sure on the metallic and roughness, we had alpha as luminance. Remember, this turns the image into grayscale. Well, a normal map actually has many, many colors. So it's, you know, got red, green, and blue. So we need to make sure we turn that off for this particular map. So the normal map, we make sure it's on a raw color space with alpha luminance off. The roughness, alpha luminance is on and color space is set to raw. The metallic is also set to raw and alpha luminance is turned on. And then the color map, Alpha luminance is turned off, and the color space is set to sRGB. I know if you write it all down, it's easy to remember. So these settings. Once this is established, you set up the shading network for our scene. So I'm just going to hide that. And the only thing we need to do at this point is to actually bring in some lights into Arnold. So we're going to use an IBL. And that's going to help re really show off the shader inside of Maya. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top here and go to Arnold, Lights, and then we're going to start on the um, Sky Dome Light. Click on that, and that will load it in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the attributes for that particular light. Go to color, input box, we're going to pick another file, and then we're going to go, and we're not going to mess with any of these, but we are going to go to file name, input that in, and then we're going to go to a special directory inside of Maya that has a bunch of IBLs, high dynamic range images, to help us light the scene. So what we're going to go to is go to 
my computer, go to your main operate, uh, operating system, the C drive, wherever Maya is installed, go to Program Files, find Autodesk, find the latest version of Maya. So, again, I've had Maya on this machine for quite a bit of time. So, go to 18, go to Presets, so Presets right here, and then go to Assets, then go to IBL. And then right here, as you can tell, if you just click through them, different environments for us to choose from. And there's like a color version and then a neutral black and white version of it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pick this office space and I'm going to pick the color. I'll hit open and that will load it in. The next thing I wanted to talk about before we started rendering is that this object that was created was created with subdivisions in mind so it is actually created to be rendered in subdivision mode so if I go in here and I select all my different parts right now it's uh, looks like the edge crease is still showing so I'll just go to display polygons and edge creasing and turn that off so now you can see here it's in low poly mode and then if I press the three key, now it's in subdivision mode. So there's all the subdivisions applied to it. Now it's being ready to render. Now, if you did it with another object that was not created with subdivisions in mind to be rendered, like the sci-fi crate, when you make your low poly, that was not intended to be rendered in subdivision mode. Only the high poly was. So if you never UV the high poly, then this will never really work when you press the three key and then apply your textures and then try to light it. It's never going to work on the low poly uh, model. 